I want to talk about the person who, is try, who will be grading your paper. If he is annoyed, he is going to give you a mean grade, a bad grade. If you make him comfortable, make him or her comfortable, you can end up with a good grade. Now, how do you annoy or make a grade or comfortable? If you clearly answer the question, that is, put the most important thing first, keep it as short as possible because the graders are paid based on the number of papers they grade. If you make his job difficult, he will be angry. Now, you can make us one sentence answer into a three sentence answer and that can make the grader angry. You can put the most uh, important part of the answer at the end that can make the grader angry. You can have a very uh, untidy writing, a dirty writing that the grader is going to struggle with to answer, uh, to understand is going to make the grader angry. You also need to see how many marks are assigned. You also need to see beforehand, analyze all the previous papers and see what the examiner, the one who prepared the paper, uh, you know, the questions in particular, what does that person want from you? What kind of answer is he, she expecting? So the grader, who, the one who grades your question is given a rubric. They already have the answer. And if you want to see what the answer, what the kind of questions are asked and what the answers are, you can always go and see the published papers and the way they are answered. If you don't do this and you just concentrate on the subject matter, then the possibility is you will end up with a low grade. But if you stake out some time and try to understand what are the questions, what are their interpretations, what kind of, in which style the answer is expected, because if there is one point and you write like a whole paragraph, then chances, eh, chances are you are going to get a lower grade or may not even get a point. And if you make the grade angry, if you deserve a better grade, let's say at 70 or 80 percent, and you have made him or uh, her angry, then you will end up with a lower grade. So analyzing the previous paper, because there are exam reports that are written, about that particular exam for all these years and if you go through most of them you will see that there are similarities in the way students attempt the question. They do not really try to analyze the question, they do not try to identify the problem, rather they are too quick uh, you know giving a solution. You first need to identify the problem. Once you have identified the problem then you can answer the, the problem and solve the problem. You can answer the question. But if you are too anxious because you know something and you jump uh, into the solution without thinking much or analyzing the problem, then chances are that you have answered a different kind of question that was not actually on the paper. So be very careful, must do the analysis, must do the uh, you know, interpretation of the question of the previous questions in the previous papers. The detailed answer sheet is usually provided with a re thorough report of what mistakes student made. So make sure you don't make those mistakes. Be careful with the time management. Be careful with, uh, you know, you need to answer the question in the, uh, in the smallest number of words. That can get you a good grade and will make the grader happy. So you will secure the point that is assigned for this question. And because the grader is happy, you know, he or she may give you some extra points just because he's feeling good. And again, they are humans. Don't expect them to be robots. They are humans. If you make them uh, angry by putting in too much of, you know, for them to go through, then they are going to give you a bad grade. And you must analyze the previous papers, uh, the, the way a particular board writes questions and what they expect the students to interpret is always very clear. So go through all those papers, go through the interpretation of the questions, read all the exam reports, you know, regarding uh, all in 2000, uh, for all the years for that subject. It may appear to be a waste of time, but I assure you, you may end up with a very good grade because at the end of the day, you need a grade to get into a university. So. This is all I had to talk about uh, that you must, the student must think about the grader, the student must think about the examiner and while thinking of the examiner I mean the one who prepares the questions on your, the one who prepares uh, the paper and the questions on your paper, you must 
thorough, must have thorough understanding of the syllabus before you start studying. You must know how, what's the breadth, yani how many of the topics that there are, and what depth you need to get into. If you don't go too deep, then the possibility is that you might have studied section 1, and if there is a question from section 1, the possibility is you may not be able to attempt it. If you have reached the appropriate depth, because questions are at the FSC level will be more challenging than on the metric level, that is 10th grade or O levels, then you must have, must have a critical mind. You must have a critical mind that should be able to analyze the scenario, and based on the scenario must answer the question. Just knowing the topic is not going to do the job. You must have this ability of switching angles based on whatever is put to you in the question. So think about this and uh, if you have any comment, please comment and I'll try to respond.